Hi, I'm Patricia Allingham Carlson, and this is my video of how I painted Penny Pack Trail 3. I worked very wet on wet to start this painting out using warm colors, and then after dry, I built up darker colors to make and create the composition. I did a lot of stippling, and I did a lot of tree work and fine branch work. It was a very enjoyable painting of a park that is located very close to us, and I hope you enjoy it too. Now let's paint. This is Penny Pack Trail 3. It's based on a photograph I took at a beautiful park that is quite nearby to where I live. I started by spraying the whole paper with water so it was quite wet, but I blocked out one little area with a rock so that it would retain its whiteness because I wanted that to be where the sunshine was setting. I begin dabbing in colors with my warms. As the sun was going down, it was lighting up the forest. Lots of gold, lots of peach, lots of rosy colors. It was quite warm. As it went through the trees, the trees became blurred with the color of the setting sun. And now I'm laying out the pathway. This was a trail that was going up a hill away from where we were standing. So adjusting the perspective so that it widens as it comes toward us. Painting very loosely at this time. Basically blocking in where the trees are coming up next to and slightly in front of the setting sun in the late afternoon. This painting was sort of an experiment. What I was trying to do was to lay out the colors and make the colors quite beautiful and then lay all the structure in much later with neutral colors. So that was my thought to try as I set out. I thought colorful and blurry and then structure it up with some Payne's gray and some good dark indigo mixed with brown for neutral grays. Things didn't exactly work out that way, but you got to be flexible. Here I'm laying out the forest structure on the right side of the path, getting darker as it moves down. And this is still wet on wet, so the colors will fade as they dry and become much lighter. I used a lot of very warm colors, and now I'm coming in with cooler colors, with the blues and with the purples, and uh, the blue-greens. Spatter painting playing it quite loose at this point, laying out beautiful colors with a suggested structure. And the shadows from the trees, the folds and dips in the dirt path as it went up the hill. And I am looking at a reference photo. Right, watercolor is interesting because just when you think you have the colors just perfect and it's all wet and blurry and gorgeous, you know it's going to dry. And when it dries, it's going to be a lot lighter. And that is the nature of watercolor. And you figure it out and you compensate by using washes. Here I'm softening the edge of the sun so it's not quite so sharp. And 
and adding the barest idea of trees going through. This is the next day, and I'm now painting again, and everything is dry at this point. So I put down that piece of paper to block out where I want my pathway to be white, and then I spray it around it so it's now wet again. But I want to keep that fresh white in the middle, and that's why I put that piece of paper down there before I spray it around it. Now I'm coming in and I'm making some of my colors brighter and I'm also starting to block in the trees a little bit darker. putting in some forest colors between the trees. Along the side of the path, on the right it was much darker, so I'm marking in the darkness uh, right at the edge of the pathway. And I'm brightening some of the colors that faded. And it was interesting that where the sun touched the trees at the top, the color actually appeared quite pink. So I'm trying to preserve that feeling as I paint the foreground tree. It was only where the sun was directly, the light was directly in contact with the tree that it turned that pinkish color. Otherwise, the light was much more golden or just brightening one side of the tree and darkening the other where it was lacking. One of my first really excellent watercolor teachers stressed to me during my lessons in college that it is very important to keep some pure whites on your watercolor painting. Now, I don't always do this depending on the style I'm working in, but for a natural effect and for the freshness of the watercolor, keeping some pure whites as a color really can make your painting look quite fresh and quite interesting. So that is what I'm trying to do here is to keep those pure whites. I'm now in the third painting session and everything had faded again and I'm coming in and adding a third glaze or layer of colors and more structure for the trees. Here is where my idea of using mainly 
a blurry, colorful background with a one-tone structured painting on top to add the trees and the forest. My idea just was not seeming to come together. I found more and more that I had to paint in other colors in the dark areas as well, not just the grays. But that developed as the painting for, was further developed. I could see it was not going to quite work as my experiment pictured it. But that was okay, and I was flexible, and I just rolled with the changes and did what felt right to me. So the tree in the foreground was quite dark. The trees that move further back into space are being painted lighter, although they too will darken as the... I'm building up more trees on the right-hand side as well, and darkening ones that I had already started. There are several trees in the foreground that will be quite bright or quite deep in color. And then there's many trees that go back in space as they climb up the hill back into the forest. Now the tree grew right down to the path. Where I have a tree touching the earth, I generally always make a grounding shadow. I tie it into the earth by putting a shadow at the base of the tree. Now the trees that were further back in space will end higher because they were going up a hill. And back to painting more trees again. Developing the space of the forest. Trees, suggestions of trees, bushes, darks, shadows. And at the top of the hill, on the right hand side, you can see that it opens up into a big meadow. And I'm trying to establish a baseline up at the top there with some lighter colors where the forest ends. It was an interesting way to work with space, to show the heavy dark forest at the bottom and then later at the top. And figuring out how many trees exactly to paint in and how many branches to show. There was an interesting area on the right side, toward the background, where a tree came up and had some very lovely lighting on it. So I'm working at the edge of the path and moving around with the lighting and the colors of the trees and shadows. I'm beginning to texture where all the leaves came down on the path and making some dots and dashes on the path instead of all smooth shadows. And establishing, establishing some of the darker, more dominant trees in the foreground and some of the depths of the color that they have 
where the trees go into the underbrush, you can see I've broken up my stroke so the dark stop and start, which is attempting to show the bushes and leaves and grasses coming in front of the tree in the foreground. If I made it solid dark, it wouldn't look like there was any vegetation in front of it, but breaking it up shows that feeling on the left side. Now, fortunately, in my picture, the trees were different shapes, different sizes, different colors, and they did all kinds of different things with their trunks. But it's important, I think, to show the variety and diversity of your tree shapes. If everything was the same thickness and the same exact line of growth, I don't think you'd have the interest. I also try to place my trees in an asymmetrical manner. So they don't look regular because regular trees all lined up like a soldier are not a natural thing in a forest although they could be if they were planted in a garden by a person and if that was your intention to show a formal garden that would certainly have a great value but this was the woods So I'm developing this tree in the background that came up right next to the sun and was so affected by the color of the sun. And trying to show the space in the background. Where the meadow begins above the forest and then the, actually the forest begins again beyond it, but there's a break. And that's what I'm trying to show with the, the darks that I'm painting in here. At this point in the picture, I would say that there's at least four layers of paint placed with a thorough drying between each session of painting. I'm bringing in more textural stroke work on the path and I'm darkening the shadows. and the contours of the land. I'm also deepening the shadow side of the tree and painting some of the wonderful coloring where the sunlight was affecting the color of the branches. Coming back to my branches, I'm brightening some of the colors. I'm also being careful to not make any bright colors going directly through the white orb of the sun, because the sun actually just, the brightness of the, of the color eliminated anything to be able to be seen within it. So the branch sort of starts and stops as it goes through that white orb. At this point, I'm putting in more diagonal branches and beginning more detailing of the trees. I'm taking the trees up to the top of the page and establishing that distant line of meadow through the forest. It's peeking in and out of the trees as it goes across, but I am trying to establish a horizon up there. And 
and the space is starting to develop pretty well on the right side of the picture, although I see I need to develop it more on the left side. When I splatter, I frequently use my hand to block where I don't want the splatter to go. And that's what I'm doing here. Using a lot of yellow because it was a golden lit day. And the yellow was sort of bouncing all through the forest. Now some dark accent work is coming in as I tweak toward finishing this thing up. Putting in some good darks for some trees that needed to be shown more clearly. And for the bushes at the base of the path. some speckles, some leaves, some debris along the sides of the path in the foreground. And darkening on the left as well to add some more dimension and space. The feeling of some bushy growth coming up on the left side in the front and deepening the shadows on the trees toward the foreground. There's not a whole lot of depth in these foreground trees. And that does conform with my vision of trying to make a very dark composition on a lighter, brightly colored background, which is how I started this idea out. But I did use an awful lot more than just gray in my shading colors. So that's the way it didn't quite work. And you could see a little bit more detailing coming into the foreground. on both sides of the path. So how many layers of glazing would you say that I've done here? Because I'm thinking at least eight layers at this point in some places. But as watercolor does fade, as it dries, it just has to be done until it looks right to you. My evaluation method is covering the different areas of the painting to see what looks like it needs more work.
So I'm developing a little bit more interest in the mid-ground on the left side. Although I didn't want to detail too much because there was almost a haze of light on the left side, even in some spots on the right, with that sun going down, shedding its glorious light over the forest. It almost hazed out detail in some spots. And that's another thing I was trying to convey with this atmospheric light of the sun going down. Mood. It was about mood. It was about a happy golden day. And that's what I'm trying to show. little details. My signature. And then I'm satisfied. I hope you enjoyed my video watercolor painting, Penny Pack Trail 3, and give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe and ring the bell below to not miss the next ones. I also have links below to some of the products I use to create my work, and to my art page on Facebook, my blog, and my product store. I'll see you next video.